So as administrators of Linux systems, we are control freaks. We want to control every part of basically everything. And why not? We want to make sure that information doesn't fall into the wrong hands, which is why I've dedicated three videos to the concept of permissions. In the first video in this sub-series within this series, we took a look at how to read the permissions. And then in the second video in this little set, we, I showed you how to change the permissions. And then we're going to look at permissions one last time in this video. I'm going to show you how to change permissions yet again, but I'm going to show you how to do that with the numerical value. So you definitely want to make sure that you have a full understanding of permissions up to now. So go ahead and rewatch the previous two videos if you need a refresher, and then we'll get started. So, I've shown you so far how to change permissions by calling out the bit by its letter designation. So, R for read, W for write, and X for execute. But each one of those has a numerical value as well. And I'm going to show you that in this video. It is an important concept. I mean, it might be a little overwhelming that there's multiple ways of doing things, but this is Linux. There's always multiple ways of doing everything, but it's definitely important to understand this method as well. You will definitely see this in the wild when you are managing real Linux systems. So again, the long listing of the contents of our current working directory shows the permission string here on the left, and we're not really concerned about the first character. You already know what that is. So this section right here, three groups of three, again, pertains to permissions. We have R for read, W for write, X for execute, no surprise there. Each one of these bits, though, beyond having a letter designation, also has a number designation or a score that we can add up to come up with a permission string. That might sound confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually easier and it's not anywhere near as hard as it sounds. But before I tell you what the number values are, one thing that I want to mention is that the number is higher on the left than it is on the right. So the number value for R is going to be higher than W, which is going to be higher than X. Now, the numbers break down like this. R, again, that's read, is equal to 4. The value of R is 4. Doesn't matter if it's in the user section, the group section, or other, R is always equal to 4. Now write is equal to 2. And then finally, x is equal to 1. So again, read is 4, write is worth 2, x is worth 1. We start over when we get to the group, so then read is worth 4, w is worth 2, and x is worth 1. Again, we start over in the last column here, or subsection, 4, 2, and then 1. So let's add these up then, shall we? So r is worth 4, so I'll type 4. w is worth 2. So I'll add 2, now this becomes 6. x is worth 1, so I'll add 1, which makes that 7. So now we know that this section here is 7. Now let's move on to the next section right here. Again, r is worth 4. w is worth 2, but it's turned off, so we're not going to add anything for that. x is worth 1, so we'll add 1. We'll make that a 5. Now we start over. Again, r is worth 4. w is worth 2, but that's off. We're going to ignore that. x is worth 1, so we will add a 1. 
So we could actually do chmod 755 against that same object right there, desktop, and press enter. And guess what? Absolutely nothing changed. The permission string after I ran that command is exactly the same as it was before. Why? Because all I did was use the chmod command with 755 against the desktop directory, but that was already what that was worth. We added up all the bits, you know, four, two, one, seven, four, zero, one, which is five, four, zero, one, which again is five. We basically just use the chmod command to change the permissions to what it already was in the first place. So no changes. So let's say, for example, I wanted to change the permissions of this folder such that my user has access to everything, group has nothing, and other has nothing. Well, that's easy. chmod, and then we'll do 7, because we do want everything turned on. So 4, 2, 1 is 7. So that's how we got that. But I want to turn this off completely, so I'll do 0. And I want to turn this off completely, so I'll do again 0. And then we see that exactly what I wanted is the case. My user can read, write, and execute that directory, or basically read the contents, change the contents, and go into the directory. But other people, they could do nothing. Now I could change it up a little bit though. I could do chmod 7, 44. So again, 4 is read. And I'm not adding any of the other bits. Write is 2 and x is 1. So just 4. And, you know, try to guess what's going to happen. And as you can see, we gave the read attribute to group and other by 744. So again, the first digit refers to the first three characters in this set of three. The second digit refers to the second subsection. The third number refers to the final section. So that's basically how you are able to change that. So we could do the same thing, of course, with files. So let's make that executable by using only the number designation. So for the first column, we have R and we have W. So we already have R, which is four, W, which is two, but we don't have X, which is one. So that's what we have right now. Now I'm going to change that to seven. Then I'm going to leave the others the same. So four for read for group and then four for read for other test file. Let's see the difference. Now we can see here, read, write, and execute for test file, because I gave it seven, which is the total of all the possible bits you can have. Read is worth four, and that's all I gave group and other. we will get back to the video shortly, but I want to take a moment to thank my sponsor, Linode. In fact, there's never been a better time to try Linode, because from now until May 31st, 2020, Linode is giving every single account access to object storage for free. That's right, whether you've created an account way back in 2003 or just today, you can take advantage of free object storage at Linode until May 31st. And what precisely is object storage, you might ask? Object storage is an easy way for you to store and access data without the need for a running server. And it's perfect for data that doesn't regularly change, like images and other multimedia files, important backups, or giant archives for servers that might need more storage space. One of the best use cases for object storage is hosting your own static website. You can have a site up and highly available on Linode's object storage service with as little as an HTML and CSS file. To give Object Storage a try for free and get an additional $20 credit on your new Linode account, sign up at www.linode.com slash learnlinuxtv.
I really appreciate Linode as a sponsor. Not only are they a sponsor, they've been my cloud infrastructure provider for quite some time now, and their service is awesome. Definitely check them out. Now, let's get back to the video. Now I can recall that command. I can change this to a 5. What do you think is going to happen? So now, my user can do everything. Members of the group can read the file and also execute it. And then everybody else, they can read the file, but they can't write to the file or execute it either. So this gives me some flexibility as far as who I'm allowing to actually execute this file as a script. So again, read equals for w equals 2 and x equals 1 for each set of three characters in the permission string. That's how you are able to make those changes. But going a little bit further here, I have some stuff inside my pictures directory and they have some permissions here as well. So I could go into this directory and I could make changes individually, but who has time for that? So I'm going to do something interesting here. I'm going to do chmod and then I'm going to temporarily go back to the old way of doing things here. I'm going to take group and other. I'm going to do minus rw and then pictures, but what I'm going to do instead is dash capital R for recursive because I want to make changes to everything that's inside that directory. That's what the dash capital R option allows us to do. Now if I actually view the contents of pictures, we can see that I went ahead and changed the permissions for everything inside of it without having to do everything individually. If I scroll back, we can see that previously the permission string looked like this, but I used the recursive option to customize group and other to remove R and W. So we had RW here, we had R, but I want to take all that away. That's exactly what the dash R option does. Now you want to be careful with the dash R option though, because if it's a folder and you are recursively removing the X attribute or execute, you are recursively removing the ability to enter into that directory. So be very careful when you use dash capital R, because again, that makes changes to everything, which might be exactly what you want. But just take a minute to think about it before you execute it and just try to determine what the permissions are going to look like after you run the command to make sure that you're going to get exactly what you accounted for. Now, there's another command that I want to basically show you guys. It's a really simple command, so I don't really think that it deserves its own video, and it probably fits in just fine here. So again, if I look at the output here, we can see that the user J owns basically everything here, and then we have the owning group here is also me as well. But in a previous video when we were creating user accounts and I was showing you how to do that, we created a different user account. Actually, we created several. Let's see what we still have here. So Etsy password or passwd. The last one right here is the Batman. The Batman exists on our system. The Batman has his own user account. How cool is that? Batman even has his own home directory right here. The Joker has a home directory as well, but the Joker was defeated and he's off the system, so he doesn't even have a user account. But the point is, and the reason why I'm showing you this, is because we need to know how to change ownership of the user and group that actually owns the object. We need to be able to do that, and that's the chown command, which allows us to change ownership. Now, what I can do here is I could do chown, then I can designate the user, and I'm going to change that on pictures. So basically, chown, I want the user to be the new owner of the object, and the object I want to change that on is pictures. I'll press enter. 
permission denied. Why? Well, because I am not the Batman. I wish I was. That would be so cool. But if you want to change ownership, you're going to need sudo or root privileges. So if I recall that command and put sudo in front of it, and then put in my super secret password, well, it's not complaining. Now we can see that the Batman owns my pictures, and I am not even going to be able to go inside that directory because even though the group is, you know, me, and it, you could check that, I am a member of the group, J. It doesn't matter, though, because group has nothing. I can't do anything with my own pictures. Now, I can customize that a little bit here, and I could do this. I could do chmod, and then I'll do 755 pictures, which, of course, will fail. Can't do that. I'm no longer the owner, so I can't change permissions. So I can use sudo and check that again. Now everybody can read and execute. So I can actually go inside the pictures directory and list the storage there because now I have access to do that given the new permissions that I just applied. Now the Batman is the owner, so I'm not going to be able to remove the file. This is a test. And that's because you have to be the Batman to make changes to what's inside this directory. Now I can also do chown the Batman colon the Batman pictures. Of course, that's going to fail. I'm no longer the owner. So sudo in front of that. And you can see that I changed the owner and the group that's associated with it. That's basically what the colon does that I have right here. On the left side of the colon, we have the user, and the right side of the colon, we have the group. So that's how I ended up with this. What I actually want to do now, though, is change the user back to me. So I'll do sudo chown j colon j and then pictures. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this off right here. I'm just going to have J colon. I'm not going to put anything for the group. I'll just press enter. And what you can see is that my user and my group now own the pictures directory, even though I didn't call out the group here. Why? Because if you have a colon and you don't type the group, it'll just default to that same group, basically whatever you put here will be applied to both. And that's how I got this result right here. Now inside the pictures directory, again, we have a number of things here. The dash R option also works, so I could basically do sudo chown the Batman and then pictures, but I'll add dash R and then enter. We can see the changes right away. And then we can see the Batman is the owning user and the owning group. Basically, in one shot, we were able to change that by using dash capital R, which makes those changes recursive, which is very useful if you want to change the owning user and or group in one shot. So there you go. At this point, you should be able to read the permission string. You should be able to manipulate permissions and also change the ownership of objects as well. In the next video, we are going to take a look at how to manage system resources, how to find out if your server, laptop, workstation, whatever you have sent to us installed on is being taxed. We're going to check that out in the next video. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. And I will see you again as soon as I have that uploaded.